For this fifth installment in the How to Bend PDC series, I'd like to kind of start moving into applications now and show some of the advantages, some of the things that you can do with bent PVC that you just can't do with straight PVC. And even like say what I'm about to build today, a self-watering greenhouse, is something you could do with straight pipes, but it's going to look so cheesy compared to what we've got. Now the model that I'm working with today is kind of a miniature, but this can be scaled up larger and larger and larger to any size that you'd like. And you can work, if you wanted to make something 20 feet high out of four inch, three or four inch pipe and have a very huge, very strong greenhouse with water integrated into the framing. But what I'd like to show now is just a smaller example of that, something that we can do here inside of the workshop. And in the future, we'll move to larger things and show you better examples of what I'm going to lay out today. So what I've got is eight bent pieces, which will blast back and show you how these pieces are made. What I have right here is something that we call a build-a-bend system. This is basically just chunks of PVC that are one size larger than the pipe that you're actually trying to bend cut into small pieces and then hot glued onto a form. This particular arc was designed for a self-watering greenhouse. But this is 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. It's colored green. The only reason I'm using it is because we're out of the white stuff. But honestly, this is just the same as any other PVC pipe that you might buy at the hardware store. It's just put it on the bender, just like before. Do is close the bend station. From time to time you're going to want to check the pipe and make sure you just kind of turn it so that the bender stays on the bottom and transfers. It will always heat the part that's closest to it the most. So even though it's heating the entire space, the place where there's positive contact is definitely going to cook more. And if you want to avoid both grill lines on the inside and just a, an uneven heat what you need to do is just keep rotating that pipe. One of the things you'll see here in a minute is that my pipe is quite a bit longer than the form that I'm actually setting it into. The reason for this is that when you go ahead and you're trying to duplicate something over and over and over again, it's kind of really hard to decide how long it's going to be. You, there's not the mathematics for measuring this kind of shape are somewhat flawed. And even if you can measure it and you can get a good number, you have to decide, are you, is that for the inside, the middle, or the outside of the pipe? And then transferring that over onto other pipes can be difficult. By running it wild and then placing a cut line on the form, you're actually able to not worry about that. And you're also able to guarantee a very, very consistent output in the long run. Because what you'll do is bend, and then mark, and at the end, make your cuts, and you'll have the same piece, as many pieces as you might need to make. Very important, very, very, very important to put your gloves on before you take the pipe off the bender. Take it off the bender. It's really cool, very soft. Drop it into the form. Is to take a wet sponge and run it over the pipe. Now once it's cool, this is now fully hard, what I'm going to do is mark it for cutting on these lines. And then it'll produce a perfect 90 degree arc that's at the size that we're looking for. I've got six T's. This is all three quarter inch schedule 40 here. I've got two crosses, three three-ways, one four-way, and an interface for a hose. I've got some brass and stainless spray nozzles here. These are awesome, and you can also get these in a lot different sizes and flow rates. This particular model runs at a half gallon per hour, which is great for a lot of home garden uses. And it's also great if you're using these to cover long rows of plants that just are kind of heat intolerant. You can use this when the daytime temperatures push up to above that cell wall breakdown point. You can just kick on your watering and both water the plants and bring their temperature down right away. The other thing I've got 
nine pieces cut 22 and a half inches. This makes sure that everything ends up 24 on center so that when you use a cover material, if you're using four by eight foot sheets, it'll have even break points without having to do much cutting. And these are end pieces that are 50 inches long. That just 50 inches is what came out of the arc that I'm working with right here. And this piece, generally, you want to find your number after you've already made your brands because then you can dry fit a couple pieces together and see what this actual amount is. Now these are kind of cumbersome. Uh, as far as when you're headed into or out of the end, you have to be careful not to trip on it. But they're really cool. This is what allows you to drain it when you know that freezing temperatures are coming. You'll, you'll be able to drain the thing very easily with these on it. So, here's how it's done. So that is the basic assembly process right there. Now what we do in order to prepare this to add the spray nozzles to it, this is a combination drill tap and deburr tool. And all you have to do, or you can just use a tap and die as well, is make sure you match your thread count and then what you have is a perfectly tapped hole in order to put the nozzles into it. So, next step is to add the nozzles. Now, once you've got this roughly put together like this, what you'll do is go through and take your joints apart one at a time and then clean, prime, and cement the pipe just like in order. With a construction this small, you can actually do it as you're assembling it as long as you know it fits properly. But when you get into larger ones, say if you take this same model and make it eight feet tall, then you're gonna wanna, instead of trying to fiddle with that and cement really fast, if you do this, then all your square positions are proper and everything, and then you can just come to one spot, cement this joint, and then puff apart this one, cement it, this one, cement it, this one, cement it, and so on. And that way you know your final shape is right. And plus the other joints in the area will keep any one of them from pushing out. And once you're done with that, you want to give it a couple hours to cure, and then take your nozzles out and flush the whole system with water for a little while. Then you put your nozzles back in and you're ready to go. And you see how with this same design, you could make this 100 feet long if you wanted to for a row cover on small crops. Or also if you wanted, you could do this same principle and have something huge, you know, 10, 20 feet wide, 10 or 20 feet tall, and as long as you could possibly want it, just following that same basic print right there. So with this, this is how it's put together, and then here in a sec we'll move into what it looks like in operation. So this is an example of this system in operation. Right now these guys are just using it for seedling protection, so they've got a whole bunch of little baby plant starts going in here, and a lot of their bigger garden is all actually kept outside still, but while the seedlings are young and fragile, they're using this small house in order to take care of it. 
there's a shade cloth on it right now because it's over 90 degrees out here and if it wasn't for that shade these things would be getting their butts kicked but you can see it lays down an even strong mist throughout the entire house and when it's got a solid glazing or a light diffused glazing on it it's absolutely great there's zero vapor loss it's just a very good environment for plants and then even when temperatures run up through the roof you can still keep your things alive and you can see the misting nozzles here so that instead of having to drag a hose around or open it up or anything you can just turn the water on and water the plants it is a great system